Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Mariah. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. So for those of you that don't know, I am quite the conspiracy theorist. And lately, and I'm going to preface this by saying it's a conspiracy theory. So that no one out there uh, thinks that I'm crazy <laughs> for thinking like this. But is it crazy to say that sometime down the line in the future, meat products, um, dairy products, whatever, will no longer exist. There was a video on Science Inside, and the title of it says, Could lab-grown salmon be the future of fish? Salmon is one of the most popular fish in the U.S., but farming it can cause all kinds of environmental problems. One California startup is growing salmon fillets from sales. Could this lab-grown salmon be the future of fish? So, take a look at this. This salmon fillet didn't come from the sea. It was grown in a lab to look just like the real thing. There are a lot of questions that people have. Number one question is, what does it taste like? Salmon is one of the most popular fish in the U.S. And it usually comes from massive farms like this, which can cause all kinds of environmental problems. Growing it from cells might one day offer an alternative. It's going to be a long, very hard journey to get there. Foods made this way aren't yet approved for sale in the U.S. or anywhere in the world except Singapore. And even if they were, are consumers likely to see them on a menu anytime soon? We went to San Francisco to try and find out. We need another source of fish, and, and that's what we're here to provide. All right. This is Aria Elfenbein and Justin Kolbeck. They co-founded Wildtype back in 2016. Last one. Their goal was to figure out how to grow a piece of salmon from cells. I started to think about a lot of my background in stem cell biology and wondered, do we need animals to have meat? One last piece. It's yours. Wildtype isn't yet letting cameras inside the lab where it grows the salmon because the process is still in development. Instead, Arya explained how it all works. So the first step for us was to basically isolate the cells. Wildtype got the cells from coho and chinook salmon. The cells go into a steel tank, like the kind you'd see in a brewery, with nutrients like sugars and amino acids. The tanks have the right temperature, pH, and oxygen level for the cells to grow and replicate the same way they would inside a fish. But what comes out afterward still looks nothing like a piece of salmon. That's where something they call scaffolds come in. So if the product is going to be a block of salmon, we'll create scaffolds that are those same dimensions. And then the cells will grow into those dimensions. They also help the cells mimic the textures of muscle and fat. The cells attach to the scaffolds and grow into a shape similar to the salmon filet you would buy at a store. And that, over time, um, becomes the final product. The growing process takes four to six weeks. Compare that to the roughly three years it takes to raise farmed salmon. If it's still hard to wrap your head around how this is possible, you're not alone. Arya and Justin introduced us to Adam Tortosa, a restaurant owner and chef. He works with Wildtype to test how lab-grown salmon looks, tastes, and feels in real dishes. It's just crazy that they're growing salmon meat, to be honest. He says it finally looks and feels pretty close to the real thing. I think if you like blindfolded me and like had me cut, I couldn't tell the difference. This one I would dip in the soy sauce. But it wasn't always this way. They walked into the restaurant and brought prototype one. It was kind of wet salmon jerky, maybe. Now he says even the taste is close. It has the same mouthfeel, same fattiness. Of course, we had to try it for ourselves. Crazy, right? So then I went and let's let's just read about lab grown meat. All right. So there's an article on Center for Food Safety, and it asks the question: Is lab grown meat healthy and safe to consume? It goes by many names. 
cultured, cell-based, cultivated, lab-grown meat, etc. As the names imply, it is a meat alternative made in a lab via animal cells in a cultured medium, like fetal bovine serum or a proprietary mix of sugars and salts. Several companies around the world are promoting this new technique as a way to cultivate a meat alternative that is supposedly cleaner and safer than traditional meat. 29 companies are planning to bring lab cultured meat to market in the form of chicken, beef, pork, seafood, pet food, and beyond. The companies include Memphis Meats, Alf Farms, Mosa Meat, Meatable, Supreme Meat, Finless Foods, well, and Finless Foods. These companies are backed by huge investments from meat industry corporations, Cargill, Cargill, Cargill and Tyson, Venture capitalist firms, Blue Yard Capital, Union Square Ventures, S2G Ventures, and Emerald Technology Ventures, and billionaires such as Bill Gates and Richard Branson. While the hype is certainly there, is lab-cultured meat actually better? Its proponents taught it is an environmental responsible, cruelty-free, and antibiotic-free alternative to current meat production. While the goal of producing sustainable meat without killing animals is admirable, lab cultured meat is in its infancy and the science behind the production methods requires more scrutiny. Of particular concern is the genetic engineering of cells and their potential cancer promoting properties. To be able to better assess whether the products are being produced by methods that involve genetic engineering and use genetic constructs that might encourage cancer cells. We need more information on how the cells are engineered and kept growing. Many of the companies are claiming this information is confidential and a business secret. These companies are not yet patenting their production processes, wherein this information would be more fully disclosed. Some suggest that the production will follow the FDA cell cultured guidelines, but the FDA cell culture guidelines do not apply to this because they're not designed for food. Herein lies the problem. Y'all are creating something that is supposed to be food for people to consume, which is just in turn going to kill them. But this is something that people are marketing as being a healthy option, a better option option a healthy choice lab cultured meat is not always cruelty free to produce lab cultured meat many producers extract animal cells from living animals this is typically done via biopsy a painful and uncomfortable procedure that uses large needles for all the people in the back that are vegan and vegetarian hi this is the cruelty-free product that they're promoting to you. No animals were harmed in the making of this. If a company could scale up with this method, it would require a consistent supply of animals from which to acquire cells and innumerable painful extractions. To make the cell-based product more consistent, the producer may biopsy the same animal many times for the cells that's growing meat requires. We're torturing animals to make fake meat. Crazy. Growing animal cells, typically muscle cells, also requires a growth medium. When lab cultured meat production first began, companies depended on fetal bovine serum, FBS, as a growth medium. Producing FBS involves extracting blood from the fetus of a pregnant cow when the cow is slaughtered. And then I'll just link the rest of this article below. All I'm saying is if we're going to be out, if we're, if we're going to say that this is a better option, we need to be told the truth. The truth of the matter is really everything carries a risk. Everything, anything and everything can make you sick, right? But. If we're going around saying this is the better choice, well, you better have the facts to prove that it's the better choice. You can't just say that it is just because you say that meat's bad for you. Meat bad. Fake meat good. How?
how the same problems that dietitians and doctors and all these people are telling you is the problem with meat and you have all these health problems and health concerns from eating meat and then you see right here imitation meat lab grown meat carrying even more higher risk than just eating the real thing if you're marketing something to me to be healthier to be better i don't want to get cancer from it that's for sure on top of that on top of that <laughs> i still have to mention my conspiracy theory one of these days one of these days Actual meat isn't even going to be an option. Eggs, dairy, butter, you name it. This hair driving me insane. It's not even that long. Why did I do that? Anyways, it's not even going to be an option. And people have been consuming the fake thing for so long that they're not even going to realize it. Imagine one day you go to a restaurant and you're like, I remember when these chicken wings used to be real. I remember back in my day, we actually had hamburgers. Imagine that. That'd be crazy. But you won't even realize it because it's been slowly integrated into our society that you haven't even noticed that it's a change. Because you can't tell Americans we're no longer consuming meat. Meat's on, it's not on the table. These are the products that we have. People would have an uproar. But if you keep telling people, well, you know, the price of this has gone up. The price of this beef, this chicken has gone up. We have shortages on chicken, but we do have this option. And then slowly people are consuming it and ingesting it. And they're like, well, it's not bad. Right? By the time that the wave, the change actually happens... People aren't even going to realize it. You know? It sounds crazy, but crazier has been said, honestly. So, honestly, I just want to know people's thoughts and opinions on a situation. Are you a vegetarian? Are you a vegan? Do you agree with what I said? Do you think that I'm insane? A crazy lady? That's fine. Whatever. But at the same time, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because if this wasn't the direction that we were headed in, these guys wouldn't be trying to perfect making the, the best fake salmon, imitation salmon known to man. And you can say, well, it's just going to be a, another option. Why? Are we about to have a food? Are we already having a food crisis? A food shortage? Let me see. 2022 saw a rapid increase in food prices and shortages of food supplies around the world. Interesting. With food prices climbing, the UN is warning of crippling global shortages. What did I say? What did I say? When you have a shortage of something and then they start producing something else to combat that, I'm telling you, People aren't even going to realize once stuff starts disappearing. Once they're like, well, we can't afford burgers no more. Here's this fake uh, lab-grown meat. Y'all do with this as you will, right? I'm telling you. But it is my food conspiracy. And I wanted to share it with you guys because who cares? Anyways, if you haven't liked this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!